Welcome to Korea and the World, a podcast on political, economic, and social issues from the perspective of the Korean Peninsula. South Korea is one of the world's largest market for video games and famous for the success of its competitive players. A core element of the country's gaming culture are the so-called PC-bang, internet cafes with a focus on competitive online gaming. They are ubiquitous in South Korea, cheap and equipped with up-to-date gaming computers, and usually open around the clock. In order to learn more about the workings, culture and history of PC bangs, and about why they are popular in Korea but virtually unknown elsewhere, we spoke to Jun Sok Ho. As he argues, their emergence is the result of the country's historical circumstances during the 1990s. They have shaped what games Koreans play and how they play them, but are now struggling in the face of recent developments in the gaming industry. Jun Sok Ha is game industry analyst at NCSoft, one of South Korea's largest game development companies. He obtained his bachelor's, master's and PhD degrees in economics from Seoul National University and has written multiple academic papers on the culture, business and history of PC banks and gaming in South Korea. Dr. Ha Jun Sok, welcome to Korea and the World. Thank you. You were doing research on video gaming culture at universities. Now you work for one of Korea's largest gaming companies. What sparked your interest in this topic? And are you a player of video games yourself? Actually, once upon a time, I'm a really eager video gamer. I started game at age of seven. But frankly speaking, recently I cannot find enough time to play games. So when I play game, I play game for my profession, but they are not so enjoyable to me <laughs> because I should analyze the game. I'm, I'm working at the NCSoft. Frankly speaking, I'm not uh, working directly on video game, but my part of work is related to video game. So my work is on the analyzing the user log data and the other related topic on the management of our company. South Korea is currently the world's fourth largest market for video games after the United States, China and Japan. A few years ago you wrote that, and I quote, the rise of online gaming in Korea is synonymous to the birth of the Pishibang. First of all, what is a Pishibang and what does the name actually stand for? Pishibang is a sort of internet cafe as you imagine, but Bang is a dedicated place to play games, mostly online games. You can game only with internet connection. Without internet connection, you cannot play any game. In Korean word, bang means simply room. In Korea, there is uh, many kinds of bangs. PC bang, jimjil bang, and video bang, DVD bang. The video bang, DVD bang is for the watching room, DVD or the Blu-ray disc. So, bang feels cozy for Korean people. PC bang implies that this place is not for work, or a study or any kind of serious job. The place is for relax and play. So PC Bang is a relaxed place only for game in Korea. According to the Korean Statistical Information Service, there are currently some 15,000 PC Bang operating in South Korea. According to TL Taylor from MIT, they serve about a million customers a day. Who are these customers? Actually, the most of customers is uh, teens before the college student. Frankly speaking, I did not see the recent data, but three or four years ago, around the 60% of the customer is a teens. Among the remaining 40%, 70% is a college student, and adult customer is a minor. What about gender? Are those mostly young male teens and university students, or is gender parity reached there? This may be a surprising fact, half and half. I think that there is an in, in, interesting reason because before the StarCraft was released, most of Korean people has uh, no experience in any kind of gaming or console gaming or PC game. Only a few, very few play games. Boy or girl, man or woman has no experience of gaming. So in Korea, there is uh, no bias or the, no social recognition that gaming is for the boy, gaming is for the man. So when the game started, the woman has uh, no bias for the online gaming, so I think that they could assess the game bias free. They play the online game with their own taste and own favorite. 
One interesting fact is that uh, one of the most popular games among girls is a first-person shooter. But in Korea, in Korea, first-person shooting online game is very easy to play compared to Counter-Strike or the Quake or Call of Duty series. But in Korea, online FPS is a very easy to play. The girls like the FPS in Korea very much. Why is it so easy to play? Is it because of a lack of skilled opponents or is it because of the mechanics of the game are meant to be easier to play? I think there are two factors. One is that the mechanic, the, the targeting is really easy. That means that when you play FPS, you are a targeting circle in computer screen, but targeting circle is very large. So you target the object very easily. Another factor is that in online FPS, you can get item to help your play. So when you get some kind of booster or any other gadget, you can play very easily in game. Yet it seems that when looking at the pro teams, they're almost exclusively male. Do you have any idea why that is? Around the 2000 year, there is a women league, pro league in Korea. And some of the player gain is popularity. But I do not know the exact reason for that, but the, when the male player is, has a more skill and more spectacular playing scene than girls or women, so the pro women gamer is disappear around the 2004 or 2005. But women StarCraft star player in Korea, they existed once. This may be a naive question, but why do teens go there, go to PC-bangs to play video games? Aren't there other things to actually do? First of all, for teens of Korea people, college students, home is not a good place to play games. As you know, almost all the parents in Korea put the highest value on the studying for college entrance preparation. If one of your parents see you playing games, she or he says something against it. 공부해. 뭐 하는 짓이야? <laughs> so, Bang is a kind of liberated space for the student, or kind of the asylum or refuge for them, from the grinding reality of Korean students. In addition to this pressure from family, there is a unique feeling of playing in the same physical space, not virtual space, physical space. You can play side by side with your friends, with yelling and laughing <laughs> and punching each other in the physical space. From my experience, the heat and the feeling of bang resemble that of arcade in 70s or 80s. For me, my first memory of arcade was that uh, who is on the top of the list of best player? Bang has given us the feeling of the immediacy. The immediacy means that direct feeling of there together. So this feeling is not easy to replicate it or assimilate it only by online gaming. I think Bang is a complement of online game in that it gives a kind of direct feeling to virtual or online experience. Does it mean that the idea that PC Bangs are attracting nothing but social recluse without social skills and friends, is that just a stereotype then? That is a kind of oversimplification. To my experience, that is a stereotype of PC Bang player. Where do PC Bangs come from and why they're so popular in Korea but virtually unknown in other countries? There is a the three social and historical force or event that made PC Bangs so popular in Korea. The first, in 1997, the Korean government failed to manage its foreign exchange. We called it the IMF crisis. We got short of dollar reserve to pay other country. We requested IMF to help our country. IMF demanded our government to restructure our economy, including radical realignment of employment systems and privatization of industry. This process was a painful one. In 1998 and 1999, many unemployed were plodded into Korean labor market. They were early retirees and young people who did not find their job. But they have plenty of time. Uh, with little money in hand. So PC Bang was a perfect refuge for these people made by IMF crisis. Uh, second, related to the first, uh, many unemployed put it into labor market from restructuring and early retirement. Self-employment was considered to be an effective way to absorb the shock made by IMF crisis. 
PC bank was uh, perfect for the potential self-employed. Actually, Korea has the largest portion of self-employed sector compared to other OECD countries. Uh, this picture of large self-employed labor force in Korea might come from the IMF crisis. The bank was a perfect item to start business for self-employed in late 90s or early 20s. Third, from the early 90s, there was a recognition among government officials that Korea should prepare for information society one step earlier. As I said, this policy orientation was expressed under the kind of catch price. I cannot exactly translate into English, but uh, we are late for the industrial age, but we should prepare earlier for information age. So as of 1998, as I remember, Korean ordinary home had a relatively cheap access to a high-speed internet connection. We call the ADSL or the XDSL. As of the 2002, over the 80% of household has a broadband internet connection. Also, the cost of internet connection is very cheap. So the self-employed for starting PC bank is a kind of incentive to start their business. Most PC banks charge barely more than a thousand won, that's roughly a dollar, per hour, but provide up-to-date gaming computers and free access to many games. Is this actually profitable? In business side, you can compare the banks with the movie theater. As you know, the most of profit of movie theater is from the popcorn and cola. Some call it economics of popcorn. <laughs> PC Bank has a popcorn of its own. Most players stay in PC Bank for a very long time. Some players almost live in the PC Bank <laughs> almost a week or the, almost a month. So some players stay there a really long time. During their staying, they order ramen, cup noodle, or the snack, or the other beverages. The side item is a secret of bank's profit. So as of the 10,001, 10,001 is divided into the operating cost like electricity, PC hardware, or the rent of the place. And some other part is it goes to the subscription fee for the game provided into bank. A bank has been an important source of money for game developer and game publisher for a long time. Could you tell us more about how game developers have adapted to this system? Games are essentially free, and some games which normally offer extra features for money, such as the game Heroes of the Storm by Blizzard, where you pay a nominal fee for an extra character, maybe one or two bucks, this is completely free in PC banks. Why is that, and how do developers actually find a profit in this? As I said, the, when you pay the 1,001 or the $1 per hour PC bank, part of the 1,001 goes to the game publisher or developer. So if you play at home, you can play the game, some kind of game free. But if you play at the PC bank, you can play the game free with the extra feature. So some player prefer playing at the PC bank because of the feature. But part of their PC bank fee goes to the game developers or the publisher. That is a, a secret of the extra feature is free in PC Bank. This is maybe a bit specific, but do game developers earn more if it's their specific game that is being played? So that would be Blizzard for StarCraft. Or is it a package that regardless of the gameplay, they will still get something out of it? In the case of StarCraft, they sold the package to the PC Bank. That was a source of the money for the game developer. but. Almost all other kind of games in Korea service than PC Bank is uh, charged based on the, their playing time. So PC Bank should buy a game time from game publisher or developer. For example, a PC Bank buy from our company NCSoft is a 10,000 hour per month. So if the customer use all of the uh, 10,000 hour, they should pay more to our company. To get back to what you wrote, how exactly does the emergence of PC banks go together with the rise of online gaming in Korea? As I said, the bank was a kind of child of IMF crisis in Korea. Many unemployed and the young people who did not find their job gathered around the bank. At first, bank was called Jushik Bank. Jushik means the stock. So the Jushik Bank means the bank for the stock exchange. She means the internet cafe for the stock trading. After the IMF crisis, people in Jushik Bang have nothing but to play games in front of their computer. First, there are the big hit game 
as you know, is a StarCraft. Actually, there's an interesting story about the StarCraft. The company that has the copyright at first, the StarCraft is an LG, but at first the StarCraft was not so popular. After the IMF crisis, LG should restructuring their business. So <laughs> they cut their software business, which is managing the copyright of the StarCraft. The person who in charge of that part said, the, I can accept to your restructuring. So I go out of the company in exchange for giving him the copyright of the StarCraft. So the company think that StarCraft was not so popular in Korea. So we have nothing to lose. So they give the man the copyright of the StarCraft. That day, I, as I remember, is uh, around the 1998, he distributed the copy of StarCraft free to Jushikbang. So people play StarCraft. That was the start of the popularity of StarCraft in Korea. And so that is a, some kind of weird story. <laughs> the biggest franchise ever serviced in Korea is Rinichi. Rinichi is, a, as of last year, 2015, Rinichi earned around the... 300 million dollar in a year. The history of Rinji is uh, 17 years, so, so is, that was amazing. But the history began 1998. Rinji was really popular at that time. The start of Rinji was a uh, starting of Korean online gaming. After the Rinji, many game developer dived into the developing online games. Lineage is a MMORPG, which stands for Massively Multiplayer Online Role Playing Game. What made that game so popular in Korea, why did it start online gaming in Korea? If you play the Rinichi, you might think that the game was so crude because the graphic was a kind of crappy compared to the EverQuest or the, any other MMORPG in the Western world. But Rinichi gave player the high degree of freedom. So in Rinichi, player made a unique social and the complex relationship in the game. That fun was not experienced among the Korean gamer. Actually, the gaming culture in Korea is very minor before StarCraft and Rinichi. But many young people contact first the gaming experience by the Rinichi and StarCraft. So when you, you have nothing to play the StarCraft or Rinichi for the first time, <laughs> think about it, that, that was a really amazing. In the context of online gaming, Korea is particularly famous for its culture of competitive gaming, or esports. Last summer, we spoke to Nick Plot, an expert on the topic, and he cited Pishi Bangs as one of the reasons why Koreans are so successful at esports. Do you see a connection there as well? This is a part of interesting history about Korean online gaming, esports, especially esports. As far as I know, actually, I heard it from my friends in the esports business. The grand success of Korean esports came from the very small beginning from PC Bank, when StarCraft was gaining its popularity fiercely uh, from 1999 and around the 2000 years. Uh, some of the large PC Bank in town hosted small scale StarCraft matchup for their marketing. So the best player in the town gather in the PC Bank. They <laughs> compete each other. This match was so popular that many spectators from far distance <laughs> people come to see the match of the StarCraft in the PC bank. Uh, a producer in the cable broadcast company at the time, the, it calls the Tuniverse. Now is, the company is a part of CJENM, uh, the, one of the Korea largest media company. Inspired by this local event and they launch TV show that broadcasts StarCraft match up. Uh, that was, uh, as I remember, as a star of the esports in Korea. After that, competition is happening in a nationwide scale. <laughs> so there is a kind of dojo practicing team just to play StarCraft to win in the national match. The popularity is not so big nowadays, but in its heyday of popularity, the StarCraft is compared to pro sports such as pro baseball league or pro soccer league. The player was a really big star and they have many, many commercial of the big brand. What are the most commonly played video games in PC Banks? We've mentioned StarCraft, mm -hmm. uh, Lineage. What else is there? StarCraft and Lineage is a mother and father of PC Bank, as I said. But as of today, the most popular game in PC Bank is a League of Legends, LOL. 
Arrowhead is a worldwide popularity. Has. In Korea, Arrowhead is the most popular game in Korea. But except the Arrowhead, many other games have a popularity in Korea in PC Bank. So if you visit the PC Bank, around the 30% of players playing Arrowhead, around the 30% of players some kind of MMORPG, around the, the other players some kind of casual game, like the FPS. FPS is classified in Korea, casual game. <laughs> it's weird things, but... Nowadays, except LOL, we cannot spot blockbuster game in Korea in PC Bank. Why is LOL so popular in Korea? In Korean gaming culture, they really like the competition. This is not unique only in Korea, but in Korea, the people enjoy seeing match of the super player. So it is a, many of the Korean gaming and spectators of esports have an experience of the StarCraft. Actually, the, when StarCraft 2 was released, many Koreans are so expected to revive their esports, but StarCraft 2 was a lack of their expectation. But at that time, the League of Legends is, uh, meet their expectations. So many pro gamers and goes to the LOL. And the pro league of LOL is a really competitive and vigorized. So the many spectators or many watchers of the StarCraft migrate to the LOL. Now, nowadays, I think that basic reason for the popularity of LOA in Korea is, is uh, comes from the experience of the StarCraft and its esports in Korea. You'd mentioned blockbuster games, mm -hmm. and the West has quite a few. There is Call of Duty, mm -hmm. and there's Grand Theft Auto, there's Counter Strike, and whatnot. Why do those not seem to become such big hits in South Korea? As I said, is a gaming console is a dedicated machine for gaming. You can imagine that if you bought the gaming console in your room, your parents <laughs> have a very bad feeling <laughs> about it. For that reason, it cannot be bought for pre-college student because gaming console may be a serious obstacle to their study. Console has no place in the living room for ordinary Korean household for that reason. That may be a simple reason for the less popularity of gaming console in Korea, I think. But PC may be accepted because it is needed for studying by internet tutoring or any other kind of internet as a, as a studying tool. As you know, we children or the teens secretly playing games behind their parents with PC. So the PC gaming <laughs> can be allowed for them. Potential consumer for gaming console is pretty thin in Korea. When the time has come that you can get a job and have enough money to buy one, one of the console Xbox or PlayStation, now you might not find enough time to play games. As you know, Korea is among one of countries that have longest working hour. That's sad things. What about blockbuster video games but on computer only? These type of games that meet tremendous success uh, in PC gaming communities in the West. Most of the games serviced in Korea is a free-to-play game. In Korea, people think that the game is free, so <laughs> they have no inclination to buy the package game. Other broadcaster in the West lose its charm in Korea for the reason. One of these games is World of Warcraft, where you pay a subscription every month. Is that game popular in Korea? Wow, World of Warcraft is. Uh, was uh, really popular in Korea, but nowadays is uh, LOL absorbed the almost all the population of the World of Warcraft. The subscription base in Korea is very few, uh, Rinage or uh, some kind of other games. So far we have talked about the video games. What about PC Bank? Have they changed in a significant way since 1997? In PC Bank's heyday, there was uh, more than 20,000 PC Bank in Korea. That's a pretty amazing number. Playing PC Bank is one of the cheapest leisure activity in Korea, especially for teens who do not have enough money. There is no place like PC Bank. From around 2000 year to 2008 or 2009, many college students visited PC Bank pretty frequently. But nowadays, many people have their smartphone. The industry of PC Bank is in decline in today's Korea gaming industry. Expanding on that, Korea's gaming industry and culture are currently experiencing a number of changes and arguably the most important one is that mobile gaming on smartphones and tablets is getting ever more popular. Your employer, NCSoft, last winter announced that it will expand its more popular PC game franchises into the mobile sector. 
Is this representative of a broader reorientation of Korea's gaming industry towards mobile gaming? Yes, definitely. That's true. I think that a mobile rush is a worldwide phenomenon. Korea is no exception. For example, the company named Netmarble, Netmarble has made a strategic decision on smartphone games until around the 2010. Now, they step up the second place in Korean gaming industry. We are third. The number one is Nexon, and the number two is Netmarble, and number three is our NCSoft. Anyway, the Netmarble gains more revenue than NCSoft. As everybody has smartphone, the PC online game and the PC bank are losing its charm. And I think that the PC online game has, may get over its climax. Another change that has been reported on is that government regulations of the gaming industry is tightening, especially in response to gambling accusations and gaming addiction. The purchase of items in games has been restricted, and gamers under the age of 16 can't play in Pishibangs beyond midnight anymore. Is this hurting the industry, as some observers argue? It is true that the regulation put a serious pressure on Korean industry, but we should notice that Korean gaming industry has been a dark shadow almost all of time. Some government, specifically the former president Kim Dae-jung and No Mu-hyun, were friendly to gaming. President Kim and his government helped Korean online gaming rise from almost nothing. But even at that time, a lot of companies in gaming industry hesitate to have their voices in public sphere in Korea. So all in all, it is true that regulation discourages Korean industry, but it is not one of decisive factors that make listen slow down in Korean gaming industry. The listen slow down is, comes from the absolute limit to population. A Korean game should not grow infinitely in our inland, so we should export game to other country. Actually, the recent past 10 years, China was a major export market for Korean online game, but recently the China overtake our developed capacity, so they made their own game. That was a major reason for our industry to slow down. As I said, I think that almost all time we have the regulation, almost all time we are in the dark shadow. So now the, the recent pressure of government regulation is not the decisive factor for the slowdown in Korean industry. How do the popularity of online gaming and these government regulations affect PC banks? Their number has been on a slow decrease okay. over the course of the past decade or so. I think that the government regulation, for example, the prohibition of cigarette smoking in PC Bank, that might impact the popularity of PC Bank, but I think that most of the reason the decline of popularity of PC Bank comes from the smartphone, because nowadays everybody has smartphone in their hand, so they play games or play the social network or any other thing. Teen, for teens, they have no reason to visit PC Bank because they can play almost all of things in their room or at the subway or cafe. Smartphone is a major corporate decline of PC Bank, not regulation. As we said before, you wrote that the rise of online gaming in Korea is synonymous to the birth of the PC Bank. Mm -hmm. Might the decline of the PC Bank therefore spell the decline of online gaming in South Korea? Yes, that is a pretty probable scenario, I think that I should say that the online game is not disappear. Some kind of online game and the, the part of online game is survived in Korean industry. As of last year, the online game is bigger than mobile game, but the online game growth rate is almost zero, but the mobile game growth rate is more than 10%. So I think that two or three years later, we have the size of industry of mobile game is bigger than that of online game. But as you said, the decline of PC bank and the decline of online game is uh, maybe correlated each other. To conclude, where do you play these days? At home, in a PC bank, on your phone? To me, the most of game played in my smartphone. <laughs> to me, the, the smartphone is the most convenient platform to play games. Dr. Ha, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. This was Korea and the World. To make sure you don't miss our next episode, bookmark our website, koreaandtheworld.org, subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, and follow us on Facebook and Twitter.